In today's video, we're going to be discussing a really fascinating topic, which is collisions, not in one, but in two dimensions. Now, they're very, very similar to the collision questions which we've done before, except we need to consider an extra dimension. Now, the laws of physics are exactly the same, however, we just need to apply them to two dimensions rather than one. Um, we know that the law of conservation of momentum states that, that essentially the momentum of a system remains constant. In other words, total momentum before is equal to total momentum afterwards. We can apply that to the two different directions in the 2D plane. So, we can say that total momentum in the x direction before the collision is going to equal the total momentum in the x direction after the collision. This will be one of our rules. Additionally, we can also say exactly the same thing for the um, y direction. Typically, we need to do some form of vector manipulation. So what we learn about vectors in the beginning of the year is going to prove really, really useful in dealing with these problems. So let me just give you a couple of examples just on the side um, over here. Well, let's keep things relatively simple. So I'm going to have a block Let's say that that is one kilogram, and that one kilogram block is moving in this direction at, let's say, a speed of five meters per second. Well, we can, let's say that this angle here is 40 degrees. Well, the speed is going to have vertical and horizontal components. So just like in vector resolution, uh, what we can say is the vertical component, that's just going to be five sine of 40 degrees. And the horizontal component is going to be five cosine 40 degrees. Now, whatever happens to this block afterwards, those are the initial conditions. That is the initial momentum. In the x direction, my initial momentum, say pi, it's called x, will be just one kilogram times five cos of 40. We can put that into a calculator if we need to find a value. And the initial, it's called P1y for the um, value of the momentum in the y direction, is going to be the mass, which is 1 times the velocity in the y direction, which is 5 sine 40. So this is just a um, uh, just a refresher on how to uh, find the components of a vector. In practice, conservation of momentum in two, uh, two dimensions can explain quite a few things. For example, if you have two blocks about to make a head-on collision, so one is moving this way, another one is moving this way, we know that the total momentum before the collision is only in the x direction because they're both just moving along this axis over here. So we can say that in this case, um, uh, well, let's just say that this one here is moving at v1, this one here is moving at v2, this one here is m1 and m2, uh, p before in the x direction, so p in the, the momentum in the x direction, that's going to be m1 v1 plus m2 v2. Now the momentum in the y direction 
In this case, that is just going to be zero because those two vectors are purely horizontal and they have no components in the y direction. Conservation of momentum in all the different dimensions, or all, all three of them, um, might later on we might look into a 3D case as well, but we're in flat land at the moment, so everything is 2D. It can explain quite a few shapes. I mean, something like an explosion, for example, so something like a firework. Um, initially, it has, let's say, initially it has no momentum, so p is equal to zero, or a star supernova. Let's imagine a star supernova, for example. So the star is is not really moving with um, in our in a, from our vantage point, and uh, suddenly it uh, it explodes. So nature tries to conserve that momentum by when well, essentially when the star explodes like so, each of those different vectors is going to get cancelled by one on the other side. So let's say those two guys are going to cancel, those are going to cancel, those are going to cancel, which means that the total momentum after the explosion will also be zero. Okay, so let's apply our new knowledge to a little past paper question. Here we've got the uh, we've got question twenty two from the two thousand eighteen OCR Physics A modeling physics paper. So that's paper one, essentially the paper which is mostly based on the first and second year mechanics. And uh, we've got a collision between a helium atom, which is initially moving. So it's moving at 610 meters per second. And then it strikes another helium atom, Y. And um, after that, they, uh, they kind of move almost like billiard balls. And one of them goes up at 258 meters per second. And then the other one, Y, is going to move at some unknown speed. Let's call that v. We need to figure that speed v. The first thing to note is that those two objects actually have the same mass. So that's going to make our problem uh, quite a bit easy. And we know we know the initial speed, so we know the initial momentum in the x direction. We also know in the initial momentum in the y direction actually, because it's purely horizontal, that's going to be zero. Okay, well, let's start tackling the question. Um, the first part is um, explaining uh, to explain what is meant by an, by an elastic collision. Well, remember, an elastic collision is one in which kinetic energy is conserved. So, kinetic energy is conserved. Momentum is also conserved. That's also conserved in an inelastic collision as well. So this is the defining feature that kinetic energy is conserved. Um, quite often people would just say that energy is conserved, but I'm just going to highlight this, that you definitely need to write the word kinetic uh, because this is a very very specific definition so kinetic energy is conserved okay next part so uh, the we're given the mass of the helium atom is such and such 6.64 times 10 to the power of minus 27 and we need to calculate the magnitude of um, we need to calculate the magnitude of the momentum of p P of Y after the collision. Okay, well, just looking at this question, I know that there is a, a harder way and a much easier way of dealing with this problem. We know that the momentum initially in the Y direction is zero. So I'm going to exploit that. So before the collision, I'm gonna say that P Y is equal to zero. So that means that all I need to do is resolve this vector into and find its vertical component, then resolve this vector as well over here and find its vertical component, and then they should add up 
to zero. Okay, well, let's do this. So uh, I'm just gonna zoom in to this one over here and um, if we do that it's not quite at 90 degrees but close enough um, we know that the vertical component of, uh, of, of x well this will simply be 258 times the sine of 65 degrees well I'm just going to remove that so I have a little bit more space to write the vertical component of this vector over here well that's just this one over here and that's going to be um, let's call that V sine of 25. Remember in both of the, those cases I'm looking at the opposite. If I'm looking at the opposite I'm using the uh, sine trigonometric function. Please remember your soak to us. Or if uh, this bit is a little bit unclear please leave a comment, comment down below. I'll be more than happy to explain this further. Okay well if we think about it there is a vertical component of this vector going upwards and there's a vertical component of this vector here going downwards. So this one over here should definitely cancel out the one below. Notice that I'm talking about the vectors of momentum. What I've drawn here really are the vectors of the velocity. In this case they are going to coincide because the two objects they have the same mass however if they did not have the same mass I would really need to be very very careful indeed when I write down that equation. Okay well let's uh, put that into practice and let's do a little bit of maths to try and figure this out. So we know that the mass of the um, helium atom um, multiplied by the velocity in the y direction should equal uh, zero. So let's just write that as, as such. So rather than the mass of the helium atom, I'm just going to write mh multiplied by the speed in one of directions. So that's 258 multiplied by sine of 65 degrees plus the mass of the other helium atom. So I'm going to write that as mh once again um, times v, which is unknown in this case, times sine of 25 degrees. When all of this is added up, it should equal to zero. So this is our main equation. Once again, because in this case, both of those particles have the same mass, I can just cancel out the masses. Well, this is actually already a relatively simple equation for the, um, for the velocity. So um, if we um, just write this down without the mass, I'm going to get 258 times sine of 65 plus v times sine of 25 is equal to zero. Well, if I was to just rearrange for v, so I'm going to say the v sine of 25 is equal to 258 times sine of 65 with a minus sign over here. Don't worry, I haven't forgotten about the minus sign. If I just rearrange for the um, for the velocity by dividing by the sine of 25, I'm going to get 553 meters per second. It's not quite my answer yet very very close but remember the question is asking me about momentum so what I will need to do is multiply by answer by the 
mass of the um, of the particle and if I do that so P is equal to mass times velocity the mass was about 6.64 times central power of minus 27 and multiplying that uh, I'm going to get uh, 3.7 times 10 to the power of minus 24 so we can write that down over here 3.7 times 10 to the power of minus 24 which is our final answer excellent stuff so this was a relatively tricky question and we've covered quite quite a lot of material so hopefully you've enjoyed that and uh, if something doesn't make sense please leave a comment down below and i'll be more than happy to answer this